I'm Adrian Turpin and I'd like to welcome you to my colour grading suite here in Kendall in the UK. Before I came here I worked for many years up in Glasgow for the BBC as a lighting designer and as a lighting vision supervisor and I benefited hugely from the amazing world-renowned training that the BBC offered back then. Then I left the Beeb and I came down here and formed my own company, The Light Direction, and I've been working down here now for 12 years. Since coming here to the lakes, I've been lucky enough to work on all sorts of projects. As a DOP, as a lighting designer, as a lighting cameraman, and I regularly work all around the world as a vision supervisor on live outside broadcasts looking after the critical colour matching of the many cameras that we use on those types of programme. So, for the last few years, I've been putting all of that experience to use in the world of post-production and in particular in the field of colour grading, primarily using DaVinci Resolve. Now, DaVinci, as many of you will know, is an incredibly powerful tool and in the right hands, it can do almost anything. So, what I'd like to talk to you about a little bit today is the real art of colour grading. Colour grading is an often misunderstood job. Many directors and producers perhaps don't really understand what it is or why it's necessary. I guess there's a common misconception that colour grading is simply colour correction, just fixing those little subtle differences in colour between cameras or scenes shot at different times of day or in different lighting. And yes, that is partly true. But that is only a small part of what a good colourist can do. So what colour grading is really all about is helping to tell the story. That after all is the most important aspect of any production, whether it be film, documentary, drama, music video, advert. Really without the story you have nothing. In the same way as the director and the production designer and the DOP are all helping to tell the story by the use of colour and light and shade, elements in the frame, the camera movement, so too the colourist is helping to tell the story by manipulating those images, by relighting, by adding and subtracting colours and hues, and by changing the mood and the feel of the pictures, you're changing the subconscious reaction of the viewer to those images. A lot of time in the grading suite is spent manipulating footage to change the way the pictures look. The colour response and the tonal response, often that can be to make the footage look more like film, which inherently lends a more high-end and naturalistic feel to a production. Sometimes it is changing the colour content of the footage to make it emotionally darker or lighter, warm and sunny, cold and moody, peaceful or unsettling. The possibilities are many, and they are all dictated by what is happening in the story, and what you want the viewer to see and to feel when they see those pictures. LUTs are another part of colour grading that are often misunderstood. We've all seen the countless adverts for LUTs. You can buy hundreds or even thousands of them. Sometimes they cost an awful lot of money. LUTs are only really any use for the footage they were designed for. Simply trying to utilise them in any other situation is probably not going to work. Quite apart from the risk you take, they may not have been technically tested. As you may know, a lot of TV series, films and drama type productions rely on the production of a show LUT, a LUT that is created specifically for one particular production. Any serious professional colourist is only ever going to create their own LUTs for a project and as we all know that can be a very time consuming process. So wouldn't it be great if there was a tool that really helped the colourist to do all of that? Something that made the process more organic and user friendly. Something that used maybe even artificial intelligence, say, to help speed up what can be a very time consuming process. Okay, so here we go with the demo part. This is the fun part. Um, I'm going to try and show you some of these great products from Colour Intelligence. And the first one is Look Designer. Look Designer 2, in fact. Uh, this is basically a way of creating your show LUT but doing it much more quickly and efficiently and also it's going to allow you to do a film emulation which is like the holy grail of colour grading. It's trying to get this true film emulation onto video footage. 
Um, so I've got a, a music video here that I've been working on. Uh, this is quite challenging footage actually, it's maybe not the most ideal for uh, demonstrating this, but in, in other ways because it's challenging maybe it is good uh, footage to look at. So this has all been shot theatrically, it's been lit theatrically, it's quite contrasty, it's very saturated colours. Um, it also has uh, front projection in the background which is also incredibly challenging to try and make work. You obviously get a lot of con uh, contrast problems with front projection, shadows, desaturation, all the rest of it. So let's have a little look at this. Um, I'm going to pick a shot here, I'm going to pick that shot and I'm going to show you what we do. So here we go. So I'm just going to drag Look Designer onto a node. So that's going to pop onto node one. I'm, normally I would have a three nodes probably set up for this because I do printer light separately but I'm just going to demonstrate this fairly quickly. The fun part really is, is, getting to, is playing with this thing and, and uh, finding out yourself how this works. It's, once you get to play with this you'll very quickly pick this up so I don't need to show you it in massive detail. But basically I'm going to pick my input profile which in this case this has been shot on a Sony in S-Log3. So we go Sony S-Log3 on the input. Uh, our output is Rec 709, it's destined for the web in fact, this uh, video. So the film emulation part of this is actually very true to the original film process. And the boffins at Colour Intelligence really have done this well. They have done this by scanning a lot of real negative and print film. They've done very accurate scanning. And with this process, it's a genuine two-part process where you've got the film negative and the print stock, which you can pick separately. So in the digital negative, you can either pick a camera stock or you can pick a legacy version of this look designer, which is called Gen 1, Generation 1, which allows you to pick a whole load of different kind of looks based on the musical kind of scale in the sense that it's got major and minor chords the same as music does have in different keys and the keys and the major and minors are mapped to different feels like you've got the, the sort of happy feel and the and the melancholy feel that you get in music. It's quite clever the way this works. And the best way literally really is to just play about with this. Now, if I was showing you this on more sort of naturalistic footage, you get a really great idea of what's going on here. This is, as I say, quite challenging footage to show you. But you get the idea. And I think what I've already decided on this footage is B major. It seems to be uh, controlling the hues and the saturation and the, and the skin tones just the way I want. So having picked that main sort of defining look, we've then got contrast options, a variety of sort of film type, low standard contrast, I've got, I'm going to pick low. Uh, you can control the amount of that you want to put in. Um, it's going to plonk that there for the moment. Then we go up to the top of this and we've got the magical printer lights. Um, we also have, now this is one of the true gems of this system is subtractive colour, which as many of you probably know is true to film and it lets you control the, the image in the way that you could only really do with film processing. Um, as well as CMY, we've got an overall density and obviously you might, you might know that increasing the density also has this effect of increasing saturation which is rather wonderful. Uh, and I'm going to have a little play about with the CMY here just to get the, the pastel colours just the way I want. The brief on this was really to bring out the pastel colours 
And this CMY just allows you to do that so easily. Uh, got lift, got RGB and overall lift. Which I'm just looking at the scopes just to get the black level just right there. The gamma, I'm just going to bring the gamma up just a touch and the lift down just a touch. A lot of the subtleties of this you obviously might can't really see when you're watching it on a video, but again, it's playing about with this stuff and you'll soon get the hang of this. Got color temperature, which I'm just going to have a little tweak on that, a little tweak on the saturation. Now, that's probably pretty much very roughly speaking how I want that. So at the bottom here all we have to do now is we can export the LUT either as a 33 or a 65 cube and I'm going to export 65 because this is going to be my main show LUT. So it even names it for you, it tells me it's Sony S-Log, it's telling me which settings I've got in Look Designer, it's telling me my output is Rec 709 and it's a 65, it's done all that for me. And there we go, that's the job done. All I've got to do then is I can turn that off. And just to quickly show you this, I'm going to plonk this. I wouldn't normally put this on the timeline, although you can. There's no actual harm in doing that. And hey presto. Now I know this is only, that's only a very rough kind of um, look at this. Uh, normally I'd spend a lot more time obviously doing this but it gives you an idea of how quickly that's flicking through the clips now and this is very closely meeting the brief the pastel colors the contrast that straight away just like that in the space of a few minutes looks is now looking fantastic So the second of the three products I'm going to show you now is called Grain Lab. Uh, as the name suggests, this is a film grain, grain emulator. Now I've got some footage here shot in the beautiful Lake District. Uh, this was filmed just locally up at Oldswater for a, a William Wordsworth uh, project. Now, it's quite difficult to show this on, obviously, on video. Um, this particular shot, I've already put a Look Designer film emulation on it with a Kodak 2398, I think it is, print and a 5274 negative camera stock, which has given me a lovely, uh, lovely warm colours there with the daffodils. Um, so Grain Lab, and again, it just appears in Open Effects, the same as uh, Look Designer. Uh, you can just drag that up off out of the effects onto your node. Now this is different. I have to say this is different to uh, most grain grain emulators. Most grain emulators you've probably seen before uh, go at the end of the pipeline, and they're pretty much a fixed kind of pattern that goes on uh, on top of the footage which is okay but it's not it's not great now grain lab um, again the boffins at color intelligence have really pulled their finger out on this one they have created um, a bit of software which actually analyzes each frame so every every frame just like in in the, in the real film world is going to have a slightly different bit of grain. The grain is calculated on on a frame by frame basis and it actually comes alive. It's like seeing real grain on a real piece of film. It's got life and it's organic and it really does make a big difference. So this goes, this is designed to go at the beginning of your pipeline on the log footage, on the original camera log footage before you do anything to it, um, which is a slightly different way of working. And you might be thinking, well, that's not going to work too well, but you just have to get your head around working in a slightly different way. Um, so I'm just going to quickly show you this. Again, it's a thing where you just need to play about with it. You've got your camera selection at the top here. This 
uh, footage is shot on my very favourite uh, Blackmagic Mini Ursa Pro. So it's a Blackmagic camera selection. Uh, you get to pick your film stock. So you've got 16mm, you've got 35mm, you've even got 8, 8 Kodak 8, 16 in there. Um, you've got Kodak 65. Um, I'm actually just going to show you this first of all on 8mm just for a bit of fun just to try and make it obvious when you're sitting at home watching this because you won't really see it too well on the uh, on the video grabbed off my desktop so if you look at my um, output monitor here you can see quite clearly uh, the grain we're getting there. Now it's all, it's all adjustable. You've got three frequency bands to adjust it in. You've got the high frequency element. You've got the main body, which is kind of probably in the skin tone. There aren't any skin tones in this footage, but if there were, that you'd be looking at the skin tones to set that. And then the bass intensity is probably really down in the shadows. So obviously I'm making this far, far too intense on this footage just to let you see it but it does give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on you can really see the life in that footage in that grain i'm just going to pop that back now to what i would probably not more normally pick a 35 mil 200 asa probably um a little play about with the uh the frequency bands the spark the body and the bass intensity can flick that on and off just to have a little look and hey presto there we are absolutely beautiful organic film grain okay here we go with the last one this is really fun this is the clever one um, they the guys at uh, color intelligence have finally got real artificial intelligence into this product and what we're doing here, this is Color Lab AI. This is a way of matching um, footage to a reference still. Uh, one of the most common things you get as a colorist is you get given a reference still or a set of reference stills as the basis for your look. And you can spend a lot of time building up a show LUT to match a reference still. This product takes a lot of the time out of that process. Um, now it's designed to hook up directly to DaVinci. Normally you would import a whole timeline. However, um, this particular piece of software will only run at the moment on a Mac. My, my main system is on a PC, so I have to cheat slightly. Um, so I've got it running separately to my main DaVinci system. Um, and the way I tend to use it is not by bringing a whole timeline in, but I bring the shots in that I need and I bring the reference stills in and then having exported the LUT, I then take that back to my, my system on, on the PC, which is not really, a, a, it's no problem at all. It's just as quick as doing it the, the proper round robin way. So anyway, here we go. I've got, um, some footage here. It's the same Oldswater daffodil footage. Uh, it's not all daffodils. There's some beautiful footage of the lake shore as well, which I'm going to show you uh, shortly. But I'm going to start off with this uh, sort of mid shot of the daffodils and the water. So all, all your clips or your timeline is is loaded into Color Lab AI. Okay, so we've got our timeline in here, or in my case, just um, a bunch of clips I'm interested in creating the match for. So the first thing we do, we go to reference stills, and we go to import stills, and I'm going to go down here. I have pre-picked a bunch of reference stills to show you, and these are all from uh, Shot Deck, which is that fantastic resource um, designed exactly for this purpose. So I'm going to bring, I think I've got about 10 reference stills here, which I'm going to bring in. There we are. I'll just quickly show you very differing um, looks and colors, 
Paris, Texas, Lost River, looks beautiful, Never Let Me Go, Mad Max Fury Road, there's a classic, colourful, stylized film, Skyfall, that's a Roger Deakins classic, Nocturnal Animals, The Tree of Life, I Saw the Devil, The Place Beyond the Pines, another classic there. What else have we got? Another Roger Deakins, a Blade Runner 2049, and The Assassination of Jesse James. There we go, lots of different looks. And we're gonna see if we can match my um, shot, uh, footage up at Oldswater and create some of these looks. So let's pick, where shall we start? Let's pick Nocturnal Animals. That's a lovely warm sunset kind of look. So we've got our reference still. We have our clip and I'm just gonna say match to still. And I'm gonna let it run away. Here we go, it's analyzing, processing, doing its magic. And there we are, it's come up with a match. Now, it isn't just one match. Down here, you'll see we have a whole bunch of matches, all done by different algorithms, a different set of algorithms, and it's gonna give me a different bunch of matches, which I can then pick. And then, having picked the one I think is the closest, I can then tweak. And then having tweaked, I can then export my LUT. It's absolutely so simple, it really is. It's, it's a beautiful way of working. Um, let's have a quick flick through. I think we're gonna go, I think with some, there is probably the closest, I think. After that, we can do a little bit of pulling around. We've got printer lights. So we've got full printer light control. The fun again is when you get hold of this software is in learning yourself how to do this and it is very quick to pick up so contrast saturation so there we are that's not not bad i would probably spend more time in real life just getting this and then i would export but i really just want to show you um, the variety of what you can do with this i'm going to flick now to a different clip this one I've got in mind is Skyfall. Um, I'm gonna just see what happens when we try and match this. So I'm gonna match to still and let it run its course. Let's see what it comes up with. There we go. So we've got um, our different set of matches again. Let's have a little look through. Perceptual. It's made a pretty good attempt at that. Uh, let's just do a little bit of tweaking. Just to get the contrast right. A little bit of saturation, probably. And that is not a bad attempt. That's pretty good. Let's do another one. Let's see if we can create a Mad Max Fury Road. So there's our reference still. There's our shot match to still. You can see how easy this is to use. So off it goes. Let's actually, let's have a look at the, let's see the different, there we go. So it's come up with quite a decent attempt there. A uh, little bit of tweaking again. There's always a bit of tweaking involved once you've found your closest match. Maybe a little bit more contrasty, perhaps. There we go. Right, let's flick along. See if we can find. I'll just do. Let's do a nighttime one. Uh, and there's a good shot that would be, I think, this will be interesting to see how well we do with this one. I saw the devil, very nicely stylized. Let's match to still. There we go, there's our various matches. And we quick flick through, that's a pretty good match there. 
I'm liking that. Maybe that one, maybe that one. I'm going to go with that one. And again, just a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of printer lights. Maybe a little bit of contrast. And there we are, we've got bases of a very good match. Okay, so we have our, our match that we're happy with. All we need to do now is export. We can export uh, a LUT and we can also export a Canva style uh, contact sheet which you can send off to clients. To export the LUT, it's simply a case of um, going to uh, ALE export give it a name and explore where it goes. It will do a, exporting a CDL and a LUT. And then we can export a PDF with a contact sheet. Uh, give it a name, you can put your name in, you can put your own logo in. Uh, you can put notes. We're going to include the reference stills and all the scenes. We'll export that. Okay, and if I go across to my PDF and hey presto, there it is. There's my contact sheet with my colour chips. Uh, it's got the project name, my name, and you can send that directly off to your clients. Okay, so there we go. We've got a, I've shown you the basic principles of uh, matching to a, a frame. Um, there is a lot more to this package than what I have shown you. As I've said already, it's designed to hook up directly with DaVinci and you can just round robin directly within the same machine which makes it very simple. Even the way I'm using it on a different machine it's still very simple and straightforward. Um, I've just shown you matching one shot, it will match whole scenes, it will match groups of shots. Um, it has got show looks with film emulations built into it as well as the reference frames. Um, you've got scopes built in. You've got your colour wheels, your printer lights. It's all here. It's so straightforward to pick up and it's great fun to use. And it will save you a lot of time. So there we are. Thank you for watching. I hope that was informative. If you would like to know more about Grain Lab, Look Designer or Colour Lab, then go to their website. That is www.colourlab.ai.